So it looks like giving you the answers and having you create the spreadsheet file is working out pretty well. Over the half the classes submitted the work on time and it looks very good. So I'll follow that plan for this week and the remaining three chapters found on page 612 of the textbook. For week six, homework number one is to do problem 3-9. 3.9 .9. 3 .9 is shown here on page 612 of the book. A small facility has a 20 kilowatt incandescent lights and it has 25 kilowatts, a 25 kilowatt motor that has a power factor of 80 percent. What is the power factor of the combined load? If they are using a second motor that was identical to the one they are presently using, presently using what would their power factor be then? So we're trying to solve two different power factor issues. First, we need to understand that the incandescent lights are purely resistive, which means that voltage and current are in phase with each other. That means it's got a 100% power factor in a sense, whereas the electric motor has a 20% reactive component, meaning that voltage and current are not in phase with each other. So we have to calculate the total resistive component in kilowatts and use trigonometry to determine the apparent power or total power in kilovolt amps so that we can then solve for the new power factor. And then the very last part is to add an additional motor of the same specifications to see how much lower the power factor is driven. So let's look at the solution here. I've got this here. This is the same solution pack that I gave you last week and we can see that they've restated the problem with the given and they've told us that the lamp has 20 kilowatts worth of energy and this is what the motor has. They're going to give us a vector analysis showing that we have 25 kilowatts of DC, I'm sorry, 25 kilowatts of true power that the motor is going to draw, but because of the 80% power factor, it's also going to have a reactive component. And the first thing we have to do is calculate for that reactive component. So it's not really clear what we have to do here. We have to enter the power factor in here and then use the arc cosine to determine what the theta is. I'm going to call up my calculator here, which is from a MacBook. You're, you can use a regular Texas Instruments calculator or the calculator on your computer as well. So we have to start by putting in the power factor value that they tell us is 80%. So I put in 0 0.80. So there's the 0 0.80. Now we have to use the arc cosine to get the value. That's shown here as 0 0.643501. Well, so if I do Notice here's my cosine symbol, right? That's the cosine of the value. Well, I need the arc cosine, so I have to use the shift key on mine, and notice the keys change. Cosine to the minus one. You might be looking for that on your scientific calculator. So, I haven't actually done it yet, but when I press this, we are going to get the arc cosine of 0 0.80 in degrees. Watch what we get doesn't say 0 0.643501 and that's because the textbook is using not degrees but radians to do this. So I'm going to do this number again I'm going to clear it out only this time notice uh, if I press on this button here I can go from degrees to radians it's a toggle so I'll go to radians and I'm going to put in again the 0 0.80 0 .80 and I'm going to do the arc cosine, which is still right here, the inverse cosine of the displayed value, and there's the 0.64. Well, I've changed my decimal points. I can do that with my calculator. Um, so I'll make it uh, one, two, three, four, five places, just so it appears to be the same. We'll do it one more time, uh, clear it, 0.8 arc cosine, and there's that same number that we had before. <clears throat> All right, so that number then, 
we have to get the tangent of that. And the tangent of that is done by pressing this tan button. Well, that's the inverse tangent. So I have to take the shift key off, and I have to hit tangent. And it tells me that that number is 0.75. Now, what's interesting is I could have done the same thing in degrees, and the number would have come out fine. It just wouldn't be displayed the same way as shown here in the solutions manual. All right, so this 0.75, notice what they're showing me here, has to be multiplied by the amount of power that we have in true power, okay, this 25 kilowatts. So the 0.75 times 25, and the answer then is the 18.75. So that is a 90 degree angle difference between the true power this way and the reactive power this way, all right? One thing I would like to point out here though, um, and that they don't show in this, is we could then get this length here. This length, this is the hypotenuse. We could determine what that is by, by getting the square root of the sum of these two values squared. Well, they do that down here in the next problem, but I'm just going to do it for this one here. So if I take this 18.75, right, and I square it using this key, squared, and to that I add plus 25 squared equals, and now if I take the square root of that, it's going to tell me the length of this hypotenuse, okay? And that is known as the total power or the apparent power. So if you have this printed out and you wanted to write in here 31.25, that's the amount of power that the power company would have to generate, even though I'm only using 25 kilowatts to do the work, and they're only billing me for that. This is one of the reasons behind why we want to have a power factor correction that's greater than 80%. All right, so that's the first part of this. So we came up with the 18.75. Now, so that motor uses 25 kilowatts of true power, and it also has 18.75 kilowatts of reactive power. And so when I combine that with the 20 kilowatts of purely resistive power used by the lamps, we're going to add the 20 plus the 25 to the 45, right? So that's how we're getting, that's how much energy combined I will use in true power. I still have the reactive power caused by the windings in the motor, and I have to then determine what this length is, right? Just the same way we did before. And so in this case, we're going to take the 45 squared plus the 18.75 squared, get that sum, and get the square root of that. This is the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So again, I'm going to clear this out, and I will put in 45 squared plus 18.75 squared equals, and then go with the square root to show that I'm using 48.75 kilovolt amps, right? Kilovolt amps. That's this KVA. That's the total power or the apparent power, which has to be divided into the true power of 45 watts down here, right? So there's 48.75. And when I divide that into 45, that will end up with my power factor of 92% or 0.92. So let's see if we can do that. I'm just going to store that in here. So we'll store it, and then I'll say 45 divided by memory re recall, hit equals, and there's my 0.92, so it's 92.3 percent. That's my power factor if I, but when using one motor. All right, so if I scroll down now, and you'll see in, in the solutions manual, they say, I want to add a second motor. Oh, so by adding a second motor, what happens? Well, if one motor had 18.75 volt amps, uh, kilovolt amps reactive of reactants, well then two is going to have twice that amount, and indeed it does. So we add that together. The two motors combined have 37.5 kVars. They both use 25 uh, kilowatts 
of real power, so 25 plus 25 is 50, plus the 20 kilovolt amps, or I'm sorry, the 20 kilowatts that the incandescent lights use, and you can see we have another, uh, another formula to work out here, right? And so if I clear this out and say uh, 70 squared plus 37.5 squared, 30, and get that sum, and get the square root of that sum, we're going to see now we have a combined uh, act, uh, total power of 79.4119 kilovolt amps. And if I divide that into the 70 kilowatts of true power, my new combined two motor, one bank of incandescent lights, power factor becomes 0.88. Well, we'll do that again. I'm going to plug this into memory. First, I'm going to clear that. Plug this in. 70 divided by memory return equals. There's my 88.01. Now, uh, I know not all of you have Macintosh computers, but I'm going to just show you one of the cool things that my calculator will do for me. If I go to the view mode and I click on, where did it go? show paper tape it shows me all of this work which actually can be printed okay i could print that whole thing it shows me all the math that i just did for all of these things since i hit the clear button the last time all right so there we go pretty neat i think i can actually make it longer too anyhow so that is uh 3-9 Our next problem our next problem is 3-10. Okay, 3-10. Again, we'll look at the Blackboard. Blackboard says homework week six, homework number two is to do item number three, problem number 3.10. Problem number 3.10 is this. Utility charges for demand based on 30-minute synchronous averaging period okay uh, what's going on oh, let me move all right there we go so uh, this is the problem that they give us um, and they're showing us a load curve for the Jones Industries Corporation and they want to know what the billing demand is and they also want to know how many kilowatt hours did they use for the period that's shown so this period goes from zero minutes all the way to 60 Five minutes all right so that's what we got to see boy this was a tricky one to figure out without the solutions so let's take a look at the, what solutions manual says when I go to the solutions manual first thing I'm going to notice is that they put this information here on the right side they put the number of minutes that are in here and they put the number of kilowatts used in those minutes here that is a clue for me that this chart that we see here was created by Excel or some other spreadsheet program. So, the way to calculate this then um, is uh, we've got to look at the individual minutes, right? So, let's scroll down here, we should be able to see what we need. And we're going to try and average these together to find out which of the two 30-minute periods will result in a higher uh, amount of demand. And they give us the answers, 216.67 or 275. 275 is the larger number. That is the correct answer. So um, you're going to have to try and get Excel to make this sheet, to make this graph. That part's not so hard especially with what we did uh, last uh, in the last couple of weeks. But what before we do that, I want to talk about how this averaging took place. So without using Excel, I looked at what the, the authors gave us here. So for the first 10 minutes, from 0 minutes to 10 minutes, we had a steady use of 200 kilowatts, right? And so it's pretty easy to say that that 10-minute period, we averaged 200 kilowatts. Well, from time 10 to time 15, 
that five minute period, we uh, went from 200 kilowatts to 400 kilowatts. Well, if I add together 200 plus 400 and divide it by two, that shows me I have an average of 300 kilowatts. All right, easy enough. Now, if I go from time 15 to time 25, that's 10 minute period of time. Sure enough, it shows me that 10 minutes right here. If I add 400 plus 100, that's 500. Again, there's two points to average out, so 500 divided by 2, I can see that averages to be 250 watts, kilowatts, excuse me. And then lastly, we have a steady last five minute use of 100 watts, so that's a pretty easy one. All right. Then they did the same thing over here for the second 30 minutes, right? So from time 30 to time 45, again, if we do 500 plus 100, that's 600. 600 divided by the two numbers, the two ranges, shows me that that averages out to be 300. And we can see that from time 50 to time 60 was a, a flat, uh, uh, was, I'm sorry, from time uh, 45 to time 50, we went, uh, we would add 500, that was the peak, to 200, which is 700. Again, there's two numbers, divide it by two, 350 kilowatts. And the last 10 minutes of these two 30-minute periods, right, is from time 50 to time 60 where we use just 200. <coughs> so how then can we weigh the, get these weighted averages out? That comes to be 275. I don't think it's just a matter of adding these three together. If I add 300 plus 350, that's 650. 650 plus 200 is 850, and 850 divided by 3 So let's add those up. I'm using the calculator from my computer. 300 plus 350 plus 200 equals 850 divided by 3. And the answer is 283 in the third. Well, that's not what we want. Um, it says here we're supposed to come up to 275. I'm going to have to add this together differently. The way we'll do that is we'll see, for example, for these first 30 minutes, 10 minutes is one-third of 30 minutes. So I have to multiply, I have to use one-third of the 200 kilowatts. The second average period uh, was 5 minutes, where we used 300. 5 minutes is 1 -sixth of 30 minutes. The 250 kilowatt average used shown here for this 10 minutes, that's also a third, and this last 5 minutes, that's also 1 -sixth. So 1 third plus 1 third is 2 thirds. 1 -sixth plus 1 -sixth is another third, so there all that adds up to be, you know, 3 thirds of a full 30 minute period. And that's how we'll come up with the 216.67. All right. So you can see my calculator's got this uh, paper tape thing that's pretty cool, and uh, it just means that I have to enter things in the right way um, using parentheses where they need to be entered, and, uh, and I'll have a nice paper readout of, uh, of what it looks like. So I'm going to clear out what I have here, and I'm going to come over and clear this out, and now I'm going to put this in. So I'll start out with 200 times 1 divided by 3, that's 1 third, equals, and there's my 66.60, all right, so that is 1 third of 200, and to that I need to add 1 sixth of 300, another 1 third of 250, and finally 1 sixth of 100. Now to do this, I'm going to have to use these parentheses, and if I don't put them in the right spot, I may have to start over, and I hope I don't have to do that because it's time consuming. So, 66 and a third plus, open parenthesis. I'm just going to start using the keys instead of the mouse. Notice the parenthesis there. So, 300 times 1 divided by 6. Close the parenthesis. Notice over here it did that for me. 300 times 1 sixth. And over here I can see the plus, so I have to now do another parenthesis.
parenthesis. Um, when I hit add, so it added the two together. So the 50 plus the 66. Now I hit the add and we do, we did the plus, open parenthesis, 250 times 1 slash 3. Close the parenthesis. There's the 83, so that's um, one third of 250 plus, so it's added up to be 200. Again, a parenthesis, 100 times 1 divided by 6. Close the parenthesis and hit equals. And we have 216.67, just like we see here in the textbook. All right. You guys can rewind this and, and do this again. Uh, you'll have to do the same thing over here for, um, for the second 30 minutes to come up with 275. It'll work just fine. Now, towards the bottom here, I mean, that's, that's the first part here, is you'll come up with a 275. So whichever this is higher, the utility company is what, is what we're going to be charged for as our demand. All right? So there's our demand. Um, And the last part of this, notice uh, we're going to have to do this all over again. We're going to have to take the 267 and, and two-thirds for a half an hour. So multiply this times this, right, plus 275 times 0.5, plus notice we're just going to use this last five minutes. It has to be 400 kilowatts times five minutes times one over 60. That ends up to be one twelfth. Right, and so we can do the same thing 400 times 1 12th. We add all those together and we will come up with 279.17 kilowatt hours. Works really well. The, it's going to be tricky um, getting Excel to do that. You, I'm sure you'll all be able to use Excel to come up with the chart, but getting Excel to do this math. Uh, is a bit more challenging, and I, I know that some of you guys are up to it, and I look forward to seeing your solutions. Week 6, homework number 3 is to solve for problem 311, 3.11, which reads, The A1 Best Company has a steam demand of 6,500 pounds per hour and a consumption of 350,000 pounds during the month of January. Based on this hypothetical steam rate in figure 3-13, which happens to be on page 121, determine the steam consumption cost for the month. Using the solutions provided last week, create an Excel file which performs the required calculations. Email me the file. Files, of course, can be combined into a single worksheet file and with individual tabs for each assignment. It will be due uh, in one week on March 3rd at 11.59. So let's take a look at, again, there's the, there's the problem as stated on page 612. And if we look on the solutions manual, this is how it tells us we do this. This one's actually pretty straightforward. It shows us the uh, steam consumption charges from page 121. So the first thousand pounds, uh, we're going to see that the uh, um, we're going to be paying three dollars and fifty cents for that thousand pounds for the first hundred thousand pounds. So it's three fifty times a hundred thousand plus the next two hundred and fifty thousand pounds are going to come out of the second rate, which is the three dollar per thousand pound rate. We add the two together, it comes to eleven. 1100. Pretty straightforward. You guys should be able to handle that one, no sweat. Again, Excel spreadsheet will uh, will work that fairly well. All right, the next and last assignment for this week is, uh, again, the A1 Best Company also uses chilled water, and the rate is also shown on figure 3-13. During the month of July, their chilled water demand was 385 tons, and their consumption was 250,000 ton hours. 
what was their monthly cost? And what was the their BTU per hour equivalent for the average chilled water demand? Same rules as last week. Let's see how that comes out. So we'll come over here, we'll go to the next one. And this one is pretty similar to the one that we did uh, last week when we were trying to solve for escalating levels of consumption. I think 3.6 was the same way we were doing natural gas. So you guys should be able to do this uh, okay, right? So remember, we have to look at how much they use, and we have to look at the solution. Here's the demand charge. First 100 tons, or any portion, is going to be $2,500. Uh, $100, right? So 2500 bucks for the first 100 tons. That leaves how many tons left over? 385 Okay, so we'll use $15 a ton for the next 385 tons. So that's a pretty easy one. We multiply those together, right? Um, and then as far as the consumption cost goes, we have to look at this. We used a total of 250,000 ton hours. And again, we have an escalating rate. So the first 10,000 uses almost 7 cents uh, uh, per ton hour. The next 40,000 uses, um, uses 6 cents per ton hour and so on and so forth. And it comes right out to be this was the consumption cost for, all right, so there's the demand cost, right, of 8275 plus the uh, $13,690 for consumption, and there's the total bill. The average demand can be calculated by multiplying consumption times the number of BTU uh, hours per ton divided by the number of hours in a month in the month of July. Right, and that's how this calculates out. So when you make your spreadsheet, you're going to have to have some stuff there about how many hours are in a month, how many months are in a year, and all that other stuff. Well, not months in a year, but you get the deal. So um, I hope that uh, this video helps you with your assignment. And if you have any questions, please uh, don't hesitate to ask. Uh, next week, we'll be doing more work like this when we start Chapter 4. Chapter 4 is on lighting, and uh, we'll be going over some of the same types of problems as we've seen here. So those of you that want to work ahead, you know what to read. You know where the problems are in the back of the book, and we'll see you online.